All right, rapid fire Q and A. So we have some questions here uh, that I've that I've chosen to uh, to roll with, and so we're gonna fire through them one by one. And uh, yeah, here we go. When cutting, is it smart to refeed or to use refeeds? The answer is yes. Um, so the quick answer that I think why you're the, the, the root of this question was to enhance training performance while cutting. So in saying that, as you are in a deficit and the deeper in the deficit you get, and typically the lower carb you get, the less like muscle glycogen stores that you have, the less energy reserves you have uh, to not only get through your day as a human, I mean, we're talking work, relationships, responsibilities, and then the gym, you're looking at having a l very little left in the tank. So refeeds in terms of that can be quite powerful. And so I would look, I would look into implementing refeeds um, more often. I would look deeper into diet breaks and this has been studied quite heavily over the last um, over the last few years, or research has been surfacing over the last last few years on on diet breaks. And the the thing I like about diet breaks is having kind of these four to one ratioed um, blocks. So four weeks of dieting, one week into a diet break. So if you're looking at a four week training training block or training phase, and then you take a week off to deload use that deload as sort of this diet break or as this refeed, if you will, and take some mental time away from dieting, uh, give yourself um, that benefit of the diet break because we've seen adherence increase with diet breaks. We've seen your ability to be prolonged into a diet. Um, with diet breaks. So in saying that, I think diet breaks, use refeeds, but also use diet breaks within your, within your cut. Why is a calorie surplus with higher carbs typically used when wanting to build muscle? So short answer on this, why are, I'll reread that question. Why is a calorie surplus with higher carbs typically used when wanting to build muscle? And so if we look at the simple answer that I have for this is we need protein to initiate or turn on mTOR. We need, we need leucine, we need protein, the amino acid leucine to turn on the signal for muscle protein synthesis. But muscle protein synthesis is a very expensive process for your body to go through. And so we need excess energy. We need carbohydrates, which carbohydrates are the preferred energy source for your body. And so we need those energy reserves, we need those carbohydrates in there to help fuel that process. And so that's my, um, that's my short answer there. And then another component is training performance. I mean, when you are growing muscle, when you're working deep into sets, when you're going higher volume, when you have more sets to failure, you are going to want higher carbs in there, again, helping fuel that very glycolytic type training, that very carb dependent type stimulus is you're going to want a higher carb um, approach, a higher carb diet on those higher volume training blocks, um, those more intense training blocks because of that training performance. Next question, best digesting carbs. So the best digesting carbs that I can recommend are going to be the ones that digest the best for you. Okay, and I know that sounds like a cliche, but that is my true answer. That's what I tell my clients. Um, and that's what we've had success with, not only with clients, but that's what I've had success with myself because everyone is slightly different. Um, potatoes are a good carb source, for example, but I can only have so many potatoes before I get uh, digestive distress. And so in saying that, like I can eat a lot more rice than I can potato, for example, or I can eat um, a bagel or I can equal carb amount in a meal with a different source relative to another source just because of how they digest, whether that's a, you know, a, a more nutritious carbohydrate or a less nutritious carbohydrate, we'll say, um, 
context matters and what type of carb digests better for you matters. Best approach to peri-workout nutrition. So in terms of everyone's a little different with pre-workout, so everyone has different, a little bit different view on this, whether you should have carbs, not have carbs. Um, I think you should go with what you feel best with and how you train best with um, in your session. And so you know, I have clients that like to have no carbs, they seem more focused, uh, a little bit more stable energy, but also I have clients that are the exact same with carbs pre, pre-workout. So in saying that, go with what you think is best and go with what you feel best in your training. Uh, at the end of the day, hit those macros, hit those calories, and that's going to be the end all be all um, of that daily accruement of calories that we're looking for a total at the end of the week in terms of are we in a surplus or deficit or whatever. So in saying that, um, pre-workout, should I eat carbs, should I not, go with what you feel best with. In terms of post-workout, again, it's gonna, it's gonna depend on the training stimulus. It's gonna depend, is this something that's very metabolic? Is this something that's very um, hypertrophy driven? So in terms of that, should you have carbs, should you not, should you wait? There's so many questions that I have for you and why you're asking, um, in what training phase are you in? You know. So in saying that, you can typically go, so if you're in something like metabolic, for example, or something very high, hypertrophy driven and you're a, a, a normal, you know, we're not saying overly obese person or anything like that, then I would recommend getting some carbohydrates, getting some protein in there uh, and, and going with that for your post-workout. How to work better, um, how to work on getting better mind-muscle connection. So choose exercises that feel good to begin with. Um, I think that's a great place to start. So I would not pick an exercise you've never done. I would not pick an exercise that doesn't feel good to begin with, that you can't really feel regardless. I don't think those are good to start with. I think you should start with something that does feel good and you feel very comfortable with, and then work on your setup, work on your internal cues. What are you thinking about? What are you considering? Um, and then work on your, your ability to stabilize that movement, to be able to create tension. For example, in the, if we're looking to create tension in the lats, we need tension in our abs, we need t- a little tension um, maybe in our glutes, and we need that pelvis to be stable for those lats to be able to pull there, pull on that pelvis and create tension. So in saying that, there's many facets to exercise execution. There's, there's many facets to improving mind-muscle connection. Um, and so improving execution can help improving mind-muscle connection because you're not fighting yourself to feel that muscle and you won't be fighting yourself in feeling tension, not just the sensation. Um, and we want to be able to feel tension um, more so than just a sensation. Okay, so keep that into consideration. So go with a movement that feels good. You, under, you start to understand the setup and the mechanics of the movement. And tempo can also help here in spending more time in the short position or the lengthened position uh, to feel either that muscle stretch completely or being able to f- feel it fully contract and create tension in that short position. So those are, that's all advice there. How beneficial is cardio compared to strength training? They, uh, the, the recent literature has found strength training to be very beneficial um, for lowering risk of heart disease and diabetes and everything that's related to um, being overweight or obese. So it's going to improve those health markers quite a bit. Uh, so I would recommend an integrative approach. If you don't love strength training, I would recommend adding at least two to three days of strength training if you can to have tension on those muscles. Again, tension is going to be even good looking at preventing osteoporosis or osteopenia later in life. Um, Studies have also found that the the quality of life and longevity of life into the elderly age, it's greater when they have the 
elderly have more muscle mass on them. So their bones are thicker, stronger, everything. So, and then their posture is better. Uh, they're, they're stronger. They don't tend to fall as much. There's a lot of things that go into that. So I think an integrative approach, if you don't love strength training and you'd rather do cardio, at least get two to three days in if you can. That's my recommendation. Overview on how we structure training stimulus. This is going to depend greatly on you, uh, depend greatly on your goal, what situation are you in, how many times a week can we train, um, but it's going to depend heavily on you as an individual, where, where have you been in terms of training, where do you wanna go in terms of training, and then what's your main goal. So there's a lot that depends here in terms of um, setting up which training stimulus that we want to roll with and what's going to get us the most efficient result. Best exercises for hamstrings. I think, again, the best exercises for any muscle group are the ones that you can, not, oh, that makes sense from a mechanical standpoint, a biomechanical standpoint, makes sense from a resistance profile standpoint, but also just logically makes sense in terms of they feel good. You, you, you're good at executing those movements, you're good at creating tension in those movements. So for me, I love the RDL for hamstrings, the Romanian deadlift, and two, I love the lying leg curl, just for the sheer fact of being able to fully lengthen the hamstring in the RDL and then be able to fully shorten the hamstring in the lying leg curl. All right, that is it for this week's Q&A. Um, thank you for, for watching the video. If you're, on, uh, if you're on board with more Q&As, hit the thumbs up. Uh, just let me know that you uh, did enjoy it. If you put a thumbs down, you probably left a long time ago. Uh, so thanks for watching. If you made it this far, see you guys in the next one.